Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 17. Ananias said to Saul, The Lord Jesus who appeared to you has sent me to you so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord before us today. Please be seated. Well, today I'm continuing to talk with you about how God has created you to make a big difference for Him here in this world. And so today, specifically, I want to talk with you today about helping the people around you who seem to be beyond your help. In the Word of God before us today, we have a great story about a prophet of God, a man of God, whose name was Ananias. Let me share his story with you. Ananias is in a hurry. As he's walking through the crowded, narrow streets of the city of Damascus. If you look at him, he looks pretty nervous. He looks a little bit upset. He can't believe what God has just said to him. God has just told him to go to a street called Straight Street and to find a person named Saul who's there praying to him. Go up to him, lay your hand on him, and restore his sight. Well, Ananias is trying to figure out if this really is God speaking to him. Everyone around him is telling him he's a fool for going to see that man named Saul. Everyone around him is telling him that Saul is going to kill him for being a Christian. So Ananias, he's thinking to himself, God would never ask me to do this. Saul is killing Christians. Certainly, God would not want me to go and help him. But God is not joking with Ananias here. God said to him, Saul has been chosen by me to do something really special for me. He is going to tell everyone about me. He is going to tell everyone that Jesus died on a cross, that Jesus rose from the dead to forgive all their sins, to overcome death for them so that they can have eternal life with him in heaven. He is going to encourage everyone to put their trust in me. Well, Ananias can still hardly believe this. But he goes along those narrow roads till he finds Straight Street. And he goes to the house where Saul is staying. He knocks on the door, afraid of what he's going to find on the inside. But someone comes to the door and Ananias says, I'm looking for a man named Saul. Well, the person at the door takes him right to where Saul is. And Ananias, he looks at Saul, and Saul looks terrible. He's sitting on the floor. He's praying. He's talking to God. And he hasn't eaten anything for days. He can't see anything around him. He's totally blind. Ananias is still kind of afraid. He knows that this man named Saul was there when a man named Stephen was stoned to death for his faith in Jesus, and Saul didn't do a thing to stop it. He knows then the religious leaders of his day, they were looking for somebody like a hitman to go and kill Christians. And they chose Saul to do this. Saul is like an angel of death. 
He's going all over the place killing Christians. And that's why he went towards the city of Damascus. You see, there were a lot of new Christians living there in Damascus. There were a lot of people who were putting their trust in Jesus. And Saul was going there to kill them. Now it was a long and hot road of about 150 miles to get to Damascus. Now you know in those days how they traveled. Couldn't, not by plane, not by car. They walked. That's why it was so hot they're walking or they're riding an animal. It's very long and hot. And somewhere along this road, Jesus knocks Saul to the ground. And he says to him, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Well, Saul says, who is this? Who is this who's talking to me? And Jesus says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Saul looks up to see where the voice is coming from, and he can't see anything. He is totally blind. The friends that are with him, they don't know what to do with him, so they just take him to this house in Damascus. So here, Ananias is with Saul. He reaches out his hand, and he says to Saul, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me to you, so that you may receive your sight, and so that you will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that you can put your trust in Jesus as your Savior. All of a sudden, something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes. And Saul was able to see again. Within hours, Saul was baptized as a believer in Jesus. Just like early in early service today, one of our little ones was baptized in the family of Jesus. Within days, Saul is going around telling people about Jesus. He's telling people that Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead for them to forgive their sins and to give them the gift of heaven. Within months, Saul's name is changed to Paul. And Paul becomes one of the greatest missionaries for God that this world has ever known. Wow. God used Saul to change the people of his day. But first, God used this man named Ananias to change Saul. First, God used Ananias to lead Saul to Jesus. Let me ask you today, has God given you a Saul in your life? Has God asked you to go to someone who seems totally beyond your help and he's asked you to lead them to Jesus? I talked with a woman recently about her son. Her son was in prison for robbery. Everyone had given up on him. No one cared about him except for his mother. She believed that God still had something in mind for her son. She believed that God still could do something good with his life. Her son was like Saul. She was like Ananias. I talked with a couple not long ago who had been married 50 years. 50 years. The husband was crying as he was telling me about his wonderful wife. He said, I can hardly believe that she stayed with me 
all these years. When we were first married, I was a terrible husband. I didn't believe in Jesus. I never went to church with her. I pretty much was terrible to everyone around me. I was an angry man. One day I came home from work. We were only married about six months. And I found my wife sitting on the couch and she was crying. She was talking to God about me. She never gave up on me. I can't believe she's been with me all these years. This man was like Saul. His wife was like Ananias. Do you have a Saul in your life? Is he or she abandoned by everyone around them? Nobody cares about them? What can you do? Is there anything you can do? Yes. You can learn what to do from some of the great people you have to read about in the Bible. There's Joseph. Joseph didn't abandon his brothers when they sold him into slavery. No, instead, he welcomed them to come to live with him in Egypt. King David didn't abandon King Saul when King Saul was trying to kill him. Instead, here David was caring and helping Saul in the court. Hosea's wife was unfaithful to him. But he didn't abandon her. No, instead he kept wanting her to continue to be his wife. And all you have to do is look at all the examples in the Bible from Jesus. Remember Peter? Jesus saw something in Peter that nobody else saw. Jesus saw the potential for Peter to be a great disciple for him. Remember Jesus spending time with that adulterous woman whom everybody else hated, whom everybody else wouldn't have anything to do with? Jesus was willing to forgive her sins and to give her hope for the rest of her life. Remember that thief on the cross? Jesus even saw something in him. When the thief cried to Jesus for help, Jesus was willing to forgive him, and he told him today he would be with him in heaven. And Jesus saw something in this man named Saul today too, didn't he? Jesus saw the potential for him to be a great missionary for him. Don't give up on the Saul's in your life. Don't write them off. Call him brother. Call her sister. Tell them about Jesus. Keep praying for them. Remember, God never gives up on anyone, and God can use you to be the one to care about them. There were two college roommates. The one roommate, well, he pretty much got drunk every day in college. He hardly went to classes, nearly flunked out of college. He was mean, cruel to most people around him. But his roommate never gave up on him. He cleaned up the messes he continued to make in the dorm room. He continued to invite him to come to church with him. He continued to talk to him about Jesus. He never gave up on him. Two years later, his roommate finally came around. Two years. And now his roommate is a successful Christian man. God has created you to make a difference here in this world. How? There are some souls around you in your life. 
And God wants you to be like an Ananias to them. God wants you to care about them when nobody else does. And God wants you to lead them to know Jesus. Accept these challenges when they come in your life and you'll find that God will richly bless you too. Amen. Let's now stand and sing together the next song of prayer.